Hi, I'm Susan Main. I'm the gallery director and curator at BizArts, and I was asked to be the juror for the spring jury exhibition of the Rockville Arts League here at Glenview Mansion. I'm also a teacher at the Maryland Institute College of Art. I'm the program director for their pre-college in Tuscany program, and I'm an artist myself. And it was my pleasure to be invited to take a look at all the, these amazing works of art that have been produced by the members of the Rockville Arts League. It was very difficult for me to make decisions about what should stay and what should go. There are a lot of accomplished artists here. And what ended up being my criteria was that um, I, first of all, want to look at a work of art and I want it to hold my attention. And so the winners in this uh, exhibition were mostly showing me that they could push the medium to a different level. And the grand winner in this prize, after much consideration, was in the mixed media category. It's this beautiful piece over the mantle here. Uh, it's called Her Majestic Spring Attire, and it is a digital painting on aluminum. And as you can see, it's just beautifully crafted. It's an object in itself. And there is, are these references to art history and contemporary, the contemporary moment that I find really interesting conceptually. So not only is it crafted beautiful, that there's a command over digital manipulation and photography, but there's also a message that's being sent kind of across the ages. And when I looked at this piece, I was immediately struck by this figure in the center who's surrounded by kind of this blossoming world, an otherworldly place, kind of fantastical. But the colors, if you look carefully, are really the colors that you see that are in spring bloom, pastels, deeply saturated against lush, lush greens. And they're floating and they're disintegrating and reforming. And then as you get closer to the center, the beautiful porcelain-skinned subject of this piece is attired by a jeweled crown, more flowers, a beautiful brooch, again, that echoes the tondo of the entire piece. It's in a circle. And the figure is very unflinching and quite serious as she looks out. And so there's this timeless sort of engagement with the gaze is, is present in this very contemporary piece. And it made me think a little bit about Botticelli's Venuses, about Hindu goddesses, and also maybe high fashion, contemporary high fashion, very glossy um, photography. And all of those things, I think, give it that kind of spark. It's not just a moment in time that photography can capture, but it's a moment through time. I'm standing in front of two other prize-winning pieces, strong contenders for the grand prize, that I really enjoyed looking at and looking again at. And this one was in the mixed media category as well. This is a piece called um, The Last Scoop by Kathy McDermott. And as you can see, there's a woman doing an ordinary chore in the kitchen. But what caught me is that I really thought there was a sense of economy in the piece. There was an absence of too many details in, in favor of kind of that focus on that very sensual moment when you reach into the squash or the melon and you pull those seeds out. And the way that this artist sort of depicts the ordinariness of this is a very simple composition. In the background, you can see that there are certain things that are fading out in the background. The color is, is muted, and the lack of detail creates a sense of space. But I feel like the artist is not interested as much in creating that illusion of deep space as she is in creating a mood. And the mood of this piece feels like someone lost in a reverie, doing a chore that's very pleasant, and fulfilling, and all of the world sort of drops away, and there's this moment when you're kind of surrounded by 
kind of the beautifulness of just having a moment in the kitchen preparing food. I couldn't help but feel the sensuousness of that from this very simple, straightforward piece of work. And then to, to the side here is a piece by Robert Lamar, a very accomplished painter, immediately caught my attention. Uh, and what we have here is this amazing composition across, again, an ordinary table in a home. There's a sweeping diagonal from one corner to the other. It goes into this sort of this back space that's indiscriminate through these windows looking out into the outside. And then we have these like beautiful moments of color, little jewels of color, flat spots of patches of color, volumetric bits of color. And we also have this gorgeous, gorgeous golden table. And you can see and feel the gloss of the stain and the wood being pieced together in that. And it takes up the entire frame from side to side. And you can see the newspaper. There's just like this amazing ability to carry us into a space and make us look at every single bit of the composition. Each little piece, every little corner, every edge has something to say and contributes to the overall beauty of the painting. I'm standing in front of uh, two other first prize winners, and we have noble, beautiful pastel, small pastel drawing of a woman. I, I'm assuming her name is Renee. That's the title of the piece. And this was in the room, sitting on the floor, as I'm judging, very kind of in the corner and it held its own against the much larger pieces. And I think that the reason that that's happening is that not only is the drawing, the actual drawing, the structure of the drawing, absolutely beautiful. This, this artist knows how to draw. Um, the handling of the medium is, is quite wonderful and the choice of colors. I like how sometimes I, would, I see that the, the pastel is really exerting itself on the surface of the paper, as well as creating, creating the illusion of the volumes of the figure and the light that's in the piece. But I also like where the marks sort of allow the paper to show through, and that there are not such clear-cut edges. There are some dissolving of the edges so that the figure becomes kind of one with the environment that she's existing in and also the light that's hitting her. Particularly on the top of the head where it sort of dissolves into this splash of the little kinds of kind of little almost pointillism marks of, of color. But the hair sort of it doesn't become so important to flatten that head or tighten that, the medium around that head, it becomes more important that the head becomes part of the light. And in, indeed it really does, it sort of echoes perception. That moment when you look into uh, and see a scene and the sun is shining so brightly and it, it's almost blinding and you're taken away from the literalness of the representation before your eyes and it becomes something else, something sort of magical. I'm standing in front of this beautiful, large-scale watercolor, a medium that's known for being a very difficult medium. It can be stretched from being very watery and, and uh, loose to something that's much tighter. And this artist shows you the extremes of the medium, from the most fluid, transparent areas to something that's much more opaque and exact. And I'm particularly enjoying the juxtaposition of those looser, fluid moments with the more um, precise, opaque moments. And this, in addition, this artist creates a, a, a fascinating space. And watercolor is particularly a great medium to capture light. And because the surface of the paper comes through and so things look like they're glowing with light. And this artist looks down on this tabletop 
or it seems to be a tabletop, it could be some other place in space, and these objects sort of feel transcendent on top of this watery, infinite space, yet they feel very grounded. It's a spectacular example of real fine skill in watercolor. This is Francis Letterer's sculpture, the first prize winner in its category, and it is made out of terracotta, and it looks like it has some kind of finished patina on it that really makes it look bronze-like. But what struck me about this piece is that, uh, first of all, it's very accomplished. You can see that this artist has been really looking at the human form for a very long time, that there's a comfort level with depicting the human form, yet in this piece there's some, some risk taking. It's very difficult to make that arm extend out and to enlarge that hand and to create the expressive power that this artist is, is showing us. Um, I'm particularly interested in all of the negative space in the piece. As you move through the piece, in and out and around, there are so many interesting nooks and crannies to, to have your eye pass through. And the expression on the face, it, it reminds me of, of certain motifs from the 19th century, and yet it is um, somehow very, very modern and, and free. And uh, the weight of the feet and the body in space is very well done. You can see that they're very grounded, and so you feel a sense of kind of relief that the body is there, yet then all these spidery arms and these sh spidery shoulders and the twist of the head and the, the gesture of the hands contradict that stability and create the sense of, of energy.